自分が望む結末ではなかったと絶望するのなら他の世界に退場すればいい選択肢は無限にあるはずだ世界に来て7日間ずっと眠っていたのここはクワットラトム聖女の世界ではあるけれど私たちにとっては死の世界ってことになるみたい一度退場すれば元の世界に戻れると思うな。見つかるといいね。はい。どこへ行くんだ。In honor of Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary, the good folks at Square have finally announced the next mainline sequel in the Kingdom Hearts series, and they didn't even wait that long to do it. Yes. You heard that right. The next numbered Kingdom Hearts game will continue Sora's story after the third installment's shocking ending. Welcome to Consequences, the only choice that matters. If you love story driven games like Kingdom Hearts, you'll love what we do. So hit that subscribe button, notification bell, and you'll find out even more from us. Only 0.4% of you are subscribed, so I'd love to have more of you aboard if you enjoy this video. This is your spoiler warning for all the Kingdom Hearts games, including the mobile games, side games, rhythm games, everything. If you don't want to know what happens in Kingdom Hearts, click away now and return once you've played every single one of them. Announced at Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary presentation, Kingdom Hearts 4 was revealed alongside the finale for Union Cross Dark Road and a new mobile game called Missing Link, which promises to fill players in on more of the sprawling storylines the beloved franchise is known for. The presentation featured appearances from Tetsuya Nomura and Yoko Shimomura, the composer of the series. As the trailer begins, it's labelled as the Lost Master Arc, which confirms that there will be multiple games after Kingdom Hearts 4, and that we've officially left the Xehanort saga behind. The Lost Master is likely to be the Master of Masters that the series has been setting up, especially in Kingdom Hearts 3 with Zigbar, the Black Box, and the return of the Foretellers. A lot of the history revolving around the Foretellers, Zigbar, the Master of Masters, is all tied up in the Union Cross mobile game, which not everybody played, so be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll bring out a video that. 
that explains exactly what happened in Union Cross and how that's going to filter into the ongoing Lost Master arc. Sora features prominently in the trailer as he awakens after his showdown with Xehanort in an unfamiliar world. He is greeted by Strelitzia, who some of you may be familiar with as she's a Union Cross character and a Keyblade wielder as well as a member of the Dandelions. She's Lorium's little sister whose nobody, Marluxia, was a member of Organization 13 and the real Organization 13. During the Union Cross storyline, she's killed by a possessed Ventus, which explains her appearance in this new world. She reveals to Sora that the world is known as Quadratum and operates as a kind of afterworld or afterlife given how people end up here. Quadratum is based very much on the real world. Its central location is based on Shibuya, the real world financial district in Tokyo. Many real world elements such as advertising boards, escalators, traffic lights and construction cranes can be spotted in the opening of the trailer. It's been seven days since Sora arrived in Quadratum and what's followed him is the Heartless. A new version of the Dark Side boss has made its way into the new world. So could this be our first look at the game's opening boss, which has been a feature of basically every single Kingdom Hearts game. You fight the dark side, part of the tutorial for each of these games. Sora rushes straight into battle to save the people of Quadratum as Square Enix shows off some gameplay footage, confirming that the game must be some way through development. The feel of this new world is very reminiscent of Nomura's original plan for Final Fantasy Vertus 13, which means we could see more about Noctis. I mean, Yuzora, who fights Sora at the end of the Remind DLC. At the end of that fight, Yuzora can be seen waking up in the back of a car echoing a scene from the Final Fantasy vs. 13 trailer. Fans have long since speculated that Nomura wants to bring his original vision for Noctis, Luna and the gang to life through Yuzora and Kingdom Hearts. Their world could collide in Kingdom Hearts 4 with part of the main narrative devoted to this storyline. During the fight with Darkseid, Sora can be seen executing reactions, wall running, using a grappling hook and his Keyblade abilities to take down the boss in a very cinematic fight. Atop a nearby skyscraper, new cloaked characters can be seen watching Sora. Who could these people be? Members of the organization or those in league with the Master of Masters? After all, the Master of Masters has done this before at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. Why are they even wearing cloaks? They're supposed to protect the wearer from the darkness, but as Kari finds out in Melody of Memories, Quadratum exists on the other side of reality and does not belong to either light or dark. In the final scene of the trailer, Sora's most trusted companions are confirmed to be making a return as Donald and Goofy seek answers as to where they can find their missing friend. It looks like they've sought out Hades based on the blue flames and the red flames, although I'm not familiar with the Japanese voice actor, so maybe it's not him, but it probably is him. If Sora's friends have deduced that he is in the afterworld, it makes sense that they would seek out Hades, god of the underworld, who may be able to tell them what actually happens when people die. This quick scene also confirms that Olympus will feature yet again in a Kingdom Hearts game, confirming its position as the most heavily featured Disney property. However, Square, if you're gonna put Olympus in this game, put the freaking Colosseum in it as well. No, nope. looks like we missed the Colosseum. Apart from confirming the appearance of Sora, Strelitzia, two unnamed cloak stalkers, Hades and Donald and Goofy, the trailer doesn't give anything away about the locations of Sora's other friends, or which worlds might actually appear in the game. We already know that Riku ends up in Quadratum at some point thanks to the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3. It makes sense for him to be the one to find Sora. With Sora now on the other side of reality, how will the Disney worlds be incorporated into the new game? One theory I have is that Quadratum could play with time instead of worlds, and we could see Sora team up with the likes of Luke Skywalker. Walker, Indiana Jones, Mowgli, and maybe the live action versions of Aladdin and Simba. Many fans were hoping to see the Lucasfilm properties make their way into Kingdom Hearts 3 because Disney acquired the company in 2012. However, the gaming license to Star Wars was held exclusively by EA. Since then, the rights have reverted back to Lucasfilm games, which have been resurrected by Disney to handle the license, which means it could be easier for Square Enix to negotiate terms. Since Disney has been remaking their beloved films in a photorealistic way, they could fit this new style of Kingdom Hearts with Sora battling alongside some familiar allies. Now that technology and graphics have come a long way, we could see Sora team up with more of Disney's live action films such as Tron Legacy, Maleficent, Haunted Mansion and dare I say it, High School Music. Characters are split between two opposite sides of reality, which means there will be two parts to this story. Sora will obviously lead the Quadratum story, and someone else will have to take his place in the Kingdom Hearts universe we are all familiar with. The series has had many, many protagonists who could take up this mantle, but as Kingdom Hearts 3 proved, the series does suffer from a bit of an overstuffing problem. 
Riku and Kairi are the obvious choices to lead Donald and Goofy on a trek around different worlds. They'll be the ones who want to find Sora the most, but as we already know, Riku will eventually end up in Quadratum, so Kairi could finally step up as a playable character. I know, I know, that sounds like a scary thought because Square Enix loves to sideline her in favour of the boys. Out of our way! Give me power! <laughs> Ventus still has a role to play in this story, and no doubt more of his past will come to light in future games. However, his part of the story is likely to be too great a story to tell in the next Kingdom Hearts arts game. It would need its own continuation in a spin-off that also involves Terra and Aqua and could be framed around how they all deal with their individual trauma before they then reconnect with the main cast in a future numbered sequel, maybe Kingdom Hearts 5, maybe Kingdom Hearts 6. Personally, I hope that Roxas is a playable character and gets to run around with Donald, Goofy, Leah and Shion. Roxas is by far the best character in the series and any more of him would be a welcome treat by me. I don't want to speculate if the Final Fantasy characters will make an appearance in this game because I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but I will say with Quadratum's more mature look and feel, the Star Ocean series could fit in quite nicely here. Imagine Sora helping Fate fight the Executioners before Fate helps Sora get back to the other side of reality. Oh, it just sounds so good. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Tetsuo Nomura has nothing to do with the Star Ocean franchise, so this is probably a massive reach on my part. Are you excited about the direction the New Kingdom Hearts game is taking? Which characters and worlds do you hope to see in this new game? And when do you think it will actually come out? Drop a comment below with your thoughts and don't forget to subscribe, smash that notification bell and share this video with your coolest mates.